Today on Trans Day of Visibility, we celebrate the trans individuals in our communities and recognize their struggles, struggles for recognition and increasingly survival in the face of unfathomable hate. For those of you in the trans community, whether you are out or not, we value you and we appreciate you. So that was Governor Gavin Newsom of California, as most Americans celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ yesterday. Many Democrats across the country spent the day celebrating the transgender community. And there is a tweet right there from President Biden. So join us now for reaction, <clears throat> excuse me, election correspondent, The Federalist, <clears throat> excuse me, Brianna Lyman, and Project 21 member and publicist and political activist Whitley Yates. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Monday to you, April Fool's Day, but we're, this is no joke <laughs> what we're talking about right now. Brianna, what did you make of the Democrats trying to overshadow the importance of Easter Sunday yesterday? You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, transgender individuals, they say that they want to just be viewed as a woman or a man, and yet here they are asking for an entire day of visibility to be pointed out as being different. Uh, and, and not to give Biden any kind of props here, but uh, Transgender Day of Visibility has actually been on March 31st for I think about 15 years now. So it just so happened to coincide with Easter. That doesn't mean that it's right that it got as much attention as it did from the White House. Um, and with that being said, you know, the only time we should be acknowledging them with so much uh, fervor is to acknowledge that they do suffer from a mental illness. And the left has been exploiting that mental illness to push these, you know, social boundary breakdowns for the past few years that have kind of now inf uh, infiltrated regular day to day activities, right? Like what bathroom they can use, whether they can be in a woman's locker room. And so they have exploited people with mental illness for political gain. And that's what the focus should really be on. Yeah. And as you mentioned, so since 2009, March 31st has been Transgender Day of Visibility. It just so happened to fall on Easter Sunday this year. I believe it's not going to happen again until 2086. So the day coinciding is out of anyone's control. But I think what many devout Christians were really upset about, Whitley, is that he issued that official proclamation. And that's not something that is normally done. I mean, I think with the left and with the Biden administration, their continuous um, attack on Christianity and religion has been relentless during this administration. It's something that we cannot hide. And on this day, I don't care if it's happened for a decade or two decades prior to this, the truth is that Easter is something that is sacred, and it's not just sacred in the United States. And the fact that the light was shown upon this trans day of visibility and the light wasn't shown on Jesus Christ the King who, res who was resurrected is really just a travesty. And it further divides this nation and this country when you shine the spotlight on transgender and not the transformation that happened at the cross. I'm disappointed in this president and the leftists that took to social media to propel the propaganda. They they sort of doubled down on this, too. I mean, they could have moved the date, probably would have got pushed back. They keep the date. They're getting pushed back as well. Brianna, the irony from the man who claims that he's the ca most Catholic president continues after the White House announced that they will prohibit children from submitting Easter eggs with religious artwork at the annual White House Easter egg roll today. Uh, why is the White House prohibiting this? This makes no sense. It makes no sense. And, you know, this is one of the next generation is essentially being destroyed by a lack of faith that's only being promoted by those at the highest level. And it's funny because our founders, they never advocated for theocracy, but they certainly never omitted faith from their work. Right. You know, Washington and Jefferson, they invoke God during the inaugural address. The Supreme Court opens with the traditional cry of God save the Supreme Court. We have in God we trust printed on our money. So so God and faith has always been worked into our society for good reason, because it helps establish a sense of morals. And when you're able to teach children that you should essentially be ashamed of your morals, right? Because that is part of a lot of people's livelihoods, right? That's a big part of who they are as a person. When you tell them they have to hide that or they can't um, share that with other people, you teach them that it's wrong. And when they grow up, they start to kind of shy away from religion. And this is part of that dissent that people always have warned about that we're seeing now from a godless society. Yeah, and contrary to what President Biden might believe as he stands there on the balcony with bunnies, as we know, Easter is about Jesus. Easter is about religion. The, the principal day is very religious. Mm -hmm. So really, it just it really shocks me here that they are not allowing children to paint crosses on Easter eggs when that is what the day is exactly about. I think they want the focus to be on eggs and not eternity, that Christ died for us. And I think that when we think about this in the totality of what's happening in this administration and the totality of the attacks that have happened on religion and Christianity, this is right in line. But you should not shame kids for their faith, mm -hmm. especially considering this administration that is faithless. I think that they could have used, they could use a little bit of religion in that White House right now. They could use some crosses on those eggs right now. And he could actually use some prayer because the things that he's doing currently are really distasteful and they paint the nation in a bad light.
Well said. All right, Brianna Whitley, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.